Hello, church family, and today we're going to be in Matthew chapter 8, verses 1 through 4. I love these little moments where we get to see Jesus interact um, with these individuals. It, it's a beautiful thing. We get to see um, the Father's character. We get to see the character of Christ and what Christ was about back then and what Christ continues to be about today. In these four verses, we see Christ save, restore, and heal. It's a beautiful thing. So let's jump right in. Verse 1 and 2. Here we go. And when he came down from the mountain, great crowds followed him. And behold, a leper came to him and knelt before him, saying, Lord, if you will, you can make me clean. So after Jesus was teaching on the mount, it says that there was some excitement around Jesus' ministry. Great crowds had formed around him. And that's probably how the leper hears about Christ. And we see the leper in boldness come to Christ with his issues, come to Christ with this situation that he can't fix himself. And this is how the leper comes to him. He said he, he kneels before him and he calls him Lord. The leper comes to him in full submission, right? So he kneels before the Lord. Jesus, and then he calls him Lord, and then he also makes his request known to the Lord. We should learn from the leper in this situation, right? And I think a lot of times the issue is not that we, 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 we don't think Jesus can do these things, but we think that Jesus won't do these things in our lives. We come on Sunday mornings and we hear these great things that's happening in our community and around the world, and you probably hear other people sharing their stories, and you probably hear the pastors sharing their stories, all of that, and it's like, man, that's great. Go, go Christ. We read uh, even things like this this morning. And we look at this and we're like, yes, great. Go Christ. But something's happened where with what we're dealing with, whether it be big or small, I think sometimes we allow the enemy or ourselves and our pride get in the way. And we say, well, Christ doesn't want to do anything about my situation. And that's just not true. And that's why we need to look to the leopard and, and respond the way that he does in full submission, allowing Christ to be involved with our issues. Because this is what Christ is going to do. And I love this. In verse 3, let's see how Christ gets involved with us on a personal level, not only with this leopard, but continually today. In verse 3, it says, this is so cool. Uh, verse 3, Jesus stretched out his hand and touched him, saying, I, I, I will be clean. And immediately his leprosy was cleaned. So this man's situation, this unclean, unwanted, unhealthy person that, that was you stayed away from, Jesus doesn't do that. Jesus steps into his situation. It says that Jesus touches him and speaks words of power over him. And the man is cleaned. That's the same thing that Jesus wants to do today in all of our situations. He is a personable God that wants to be involved in our lives. He wants to be in the midst of everything that we're dealing with, the good and the mess. That's what Christ is about. And what he demonstrates here, Christ demonstrates in his character. He's like, I'm not keeping my distance. I'm stepping in to the situation. I'm getting involved. But from our response, we just need to submit. We just need to allow him to take hold of our lives, to be involved in our lives. And then in verse 4, it gets interesting. It says, Jesus says to him, See that you uh, say nothing to anyone, but go show yourself to the priest and offer the gift that Moses commanded for a proof to them. Interesting request. There are several accounts where Jesus kind of tells this to the individuals that he heals or he interacts with. He tells them not to go share. Don't, don't, don't go tell everybody or anything like that. And there's kind of two reasons for this. A lot of scholars believe there's two camps uh, of belief, uh, right? A lot of times when Jesus performs these miracles and these wonders, um, they're not always received well, especially by the religious people. They weren't received well. They didn't like Jesus doing this. Um, they didn't like him being and saying the things that, that, that he was doing, right? That is not something that the religious people like. But also for the common folk, they kind of go into another camp of people. They wanted Jesus to, to lead a revolt against Rome. And that's not what Jesus was about either. They saw this power and was like, we can do something. We can overthrow the empire. And so a lot of scholars believe that's, it's more cultural in context on why Jesus gave them that understanding. 
Uh, and that's why he would say that. It's obviously not because Jesus didn't want us to know what he was doing. Because this is why the Spirit would later on uh, encourage and have these writers and authors tell the readers later on what Christ was doing during his earthly ministry. So Christ wanted people to know that he could heal and had this power, but it had to do with timing. A lot of That's what a lot of the scholars believe. It has to do with timing and the right timings on when this stuff was to be revealed. And so we get to enjoy this. We get to read about this. But then he gives another interesting um, kind of request. He tells him to go and to give this gift. And if you want to know more about what this gift and all, uh, what is all kind of wrapped up in this, you need to go read Leviticus chapter 14. That's where it's, that's where it's mentioned and that's where it's discussed. But essentially, this gift requires two live birds, cedar wood, scarlet yarn, and hyssop. And he's to go offer this to the priest. He's to go give this. Now, why would Jesus instruct him to do this? Well, Jesus is restoring him back to the community. This would put him back in standing with the community. This would bring him back into the fold. He is now a clean person. So Jesus, in this moment, saves and heals and restores him back into the community. Takes this unclean man, makes him clean, and brings him back into the people. That's a beautiful thing that we see. And that's what Christ wants to do with, with each and every one of us. To save, heal, and restore. Christ wants to do a complete work in our lives. He wants to teach us and show us that he, that he is present and that he wants to be involved. That's my encouragement for you all today. Respond quickly to the things that you're dealing with. Submit to Christ with the things that you're dealing with. He's the one that can make a difference. He's the one that can be the solution to your to whatever you're dealing with. Hey, thank you so much for tuning in today. Uh, we love you and we'll see you soon. All right, bye.